Hello, Williamson County. I'm Carrie Hudson with the Williamson County Parks and Recreation Department, and it is my pleasure to welcome you to a new edition of It's About You. Our show typically uh, talks about the facilities, programs, activities, and events offered by Williamson County Parks and Recreation. But with the current global conditions surrounding the corona pandemic, the closure of our recreation centers and cancellation of department programs since mid-March, it's been quite a while since we've had the opportunity to talk to you. With Tennessee Governor Bill Lee's stay-at-home order lifted and new business operation guidelines being released through the Tennessee Pledge Program to reopen our state's economy, along with Williamson County Mayor Rogers Anderson's approval and direction from county attorneys, we have begun a gradual modified reopening of recreation facilities in Williamson County. To talk to us about these plans, we're joined by Williamson County Parks and Recreation Director, Mr. Gordon Hampton. Gordon, it's so great to have you back on the show. Carrie, I'm just glad to be here and uh, taking these steps towards getting back to what we do best, which is uh, serve the residents of Williams County. Absolutely. We're so excited about reopening a number of our recreation facilities um, because basically the heart of our facilities is in the people who use them. And we have certainly missed our WCPR family and friends. And so we're so excited about reopening some of these facilities and getting back to some of what is normal for us in terms of offering recreation services um, to the residents of Williamson County. But before we talk about the specifics around our reopened facilities, let's talk a little bit about what um, our staff has been up to during the time that our facilities were closed. Because even though our buildings were closed to the public, our full-time staff was doing a lot of work behind the scenes in a lot of different capacities. Yeah, you know, it takes a, a lot of effort to prepare for a shutdown, um, prepare for a reopening. And, you know, when you think about what you have to do to clean your house, all right, and most people's houses are, you know, 2,500, 3,000 plus square feet. When you start talking about having to clean 30,000 square foot buildings um, and all the surfaces and, and the equipment and everything that we know people are going to be touching, it, it can be almost, if you think about it, to that magnitude, a monumental task. Very true. So our staff has, um, you know, during the, the stay at home order that the governor issued, we were bringing people in, in uh, and observing all the social distancing requirements and everything like that. But we were still bringing people into work um, in shifts so that we could be ready when the order was given that we could reopen. So there was a lot of deep cleaning, uh, everything, all the surfaces in our building have been paid attention to, floors, individual pieces of equipment. So to get the buildings ready was a, a, a huge task and our staff you know, was up to the task. The other thing that we had to do is this is a growing season right now. Everything's getting green, grass is growing. So our maintenance guys and our parks maintenance guys were extremely busy. We're still having to cut grass uh, with those recent storms, you know, we're still out there having to get the limbs up that fall out of trees. And we've got to uh, maintain our parks and inspect our parks because we never closed any of our outdoor amenities. Exactly. And so with all that being said, um, we actually have been working, you know, during this whole time. A lot of people don't realize that, but uh, it's been good for our staff to stay busy and stay uh, engaged with one another and and like I said, it just takes a lot of effort to be ready to uh, get back to where we are today, fortunately. Exactly. And our staff also had the opportunity uh, in assisting a couple of other Williamson County government departments um, over that time, um, helping the Williamson County Emergency Management Agency with the operation of Williamson County's coronavirus hotline. Uh, we also worked with individuals from the Williamson County Health Department with um, some of their testing that they've been doing um, at the Williamson County Ag Expo Center. and. Other things like that, where, where there was a need, um, we tried to be as responsive to that as possible to help out where we could. You know, I'm so proud of all the people that volunteered, and that's the key word. You know, they did volunteer to go assist in the call centers, assist in the testing centers, and, you know, the fact that they, they did that um, 
because they want to help others and they want to, you know, do their part, I, I couldn't be any more prouder, you know, of our staff and all those that stepped up to do that. It made me made me feel real good that they're that conscientious in, in their service. Absolutely. All right, so let's talk about what's open. So like you just said a few minutes ago, our outdoor park amenities never closed. So our outdoor parks, our walking trails and playing surfaces, those have been open for individual public use. Um, and we do encourage patrons to practice social distancing when utilizing those amenities. Um, one thing that we did have to close for the month of April was probably our largest outdoor park to date, Timberland Park, but we are happy that that park is now back reopen at its full regular operating schedule. Yeah, that is true. You know, we, we don't, a lot of people don't realize, you know, just the, the number of uh, visitors that we have out there on a daily basis. And, you know, over the period of a week, you know, the, the number of visitors to Timberland Park is in the thousands. And so we kind of followed the lead of uh, how the governor treated the state parks. And when he determined that it was in everybody's best interest for safety to close the state parks, then unfortunately we went on ahead and closed Timberland as well. But, uh, but you know, Timberland Park is back, and, and that's really, at this time, the only amenity that we have that is operating under its normal policies. Correct. And uh, everything else has been dramatically changed. I'm sure you're going to get into that too. We will, but just to state real quick before we move over to those other amenities, Timberland Park is open seven days a week now from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Um, and as weather and seasonal allergies allow, we hope you visit us out there at Timberland Park. It's a wonderful place to be. All right, now we'll talk about the indoor facilities. We have reopened five of our main recreation facilities uh, in Brentwood, Fairview, Franklin, Nolansville and Spring Hill. Um, and those include the indoor sports complex, the Fairview and Franklin Recreation Complexes, the Longview Recreation Center at Spring Hill, and the Nolansville Recreation Center. And like you said, operation is a little different, but we're so happy to have these buildings back open. And uh, like we said at the beginning of the show, being able to offer some of our services back to the community. Uh, let's talk a little bit about some of the modifications because there are several things that have changed in terms of facility operations uh, and guidelines that have been issued through the state that um, dictate how these facilities can function um, for, for the next little bit. Um, so we'll start off um, with the modified schedules. So all of these facilities are operating under modified schedules and hours of operation. Um, and we're still being able to offer services those six days a week. Yeah, we're excited about the fact that we can, you know, ease back into this. You know, it's, you know, we would like to be able to say that, you know, things are going to pick up where they left off. But, you know, we're following the the guidelines of the governor's pledge and we're following CDC guidelines as far as the safety and health protocols. And with that being the case, you know, right now we're only really able to use just a fraction of the amenities in our facilities. And it's actually worked out pretty good, Carrie, in the fact that because of the safety net that we have to cast out there with uh, everybody having to be interviewed before they go into the facility, mm -hmm. answering the five wellness questions, everybody having their uh, temperature taken mm -hmm. through a temporal scanner, you know, that, that takes a couple of moments to do that. And everybody's been just really patient about it. Everybody understands that it's in everybody's best interest to, you know, practice um, and continue to be observant of these safety protocols. And so far, we haven't really had any pushback. Um, everybody's been very patient. They've been very cordial to one another and to our staff. So this gradual rollout of these limited amenities uh, and uses of the facilities have, has really gone well. Now, hours of operation for now are Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., Saturday, 8 a.m. to 12 noon, and the facilities are closed on Sundays. Um, as far as modified amenities, um, we do have a, just a few amenities that we can offer to the public at this point. They include our wellness centers in all five of the recreation facilities that are reopening. Um, the gymnasiums 
in four of those facilities, but the gymnasium's purposes are being restricted right now to only pickleball play. Yeah, you know, and a lot of people are, you know, they, they get a little aggravated about, you know, why can't you do this? And what's the difference between pickleball and basketball? You know, why can't we play basketball? You know, and there, there's a lot of answers to that, but we keep referring people back and we'll say this quite often during this um, taping that we're doing here. We refer back to the governor's pledge and, you know, and the mayor is, uh, is, is un in line with that. You know, a lot of people, we've had to give a lot of civic lessons about where the federal government's uh, responsibilities begin and end and then what the state's responsibilities are and who makes these decisions and we operate under the guidelines of the of the state of Tennessee and they come from the governor so his plan is easy to follow and it's easy to, to see you can go online and you just google the, the Tennessee pledge and you get to the section where it uh, talks about gymnasiums and recreational activities and it really spells it all out but you know Rather than going into all the details of that, you know, I would just encourage people to make themselves familiar with it and then just realize that we are here to, to serve and keep things safe and, and we've got to follow those guidelines because if we don't follow the guidelines, we're just going to have to close our facilities back up again. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then one other amenity that's allowed with this reopening are our indoor tennis courts uh, in Brentwood. Outdoor tennis courts were always left open to the public um, for their own use, um, but we do have ways now to offer indoor tennis services in small numbers for people who are looking to play or pick up instructional programs again as well. Um, so information about that's available through our website. If you're really more interested in kind of some of the fundamentals of how these policies and procedures work, uh, you can visit us at wcparksandrec.com. From the homepage, you can click on a button for coronavirus updates. And we've got a lot of general information there to help guide the public in using these facilities. Let me, let me also say this, though, because you mentioned tennis, you know, and when you had asked me about pickleball, you know, one of the things that kind of makes those sports or those activities ones that we can do right now is it boils down to painted lines mm -hmm. um, and the observance of social distancing. You know, tennis courts and pickleball courts have painted lines. And if you play those according to the rules, you have to stay within those lines. You're separated by a net. And so just to the actual uh, general guidelines of the game means that you're going to be social distancing whether you are really trying to social distance or not it's just the way the game is set up mm -hmm. as opposed to basketball where the contact is is you know elbow to elbow you know body to body uh and you're all handling the same ball oh, yeah. you know so a little common sense can actually explain you know why some things are allowed at this time and, and why they aren't but i just thought i would just throw that out there because the, the, the painted lines is is really uh, been very helpful in helping us to determine what we can do and what we can't the do. Key, it's a key component, yes, yes. to a lot of that, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, talking about some of our new facility operation guidelines, um, with the um, bullet points set out in the Tennessee Pledge plan for exercise facilities and their operation. When people come to our facilities, it's going to be a little bit different than it was in the past. And to help prepare the public for how entrance and exiting our facilities will operate now, we just kind of want to walk through what that looks like um, in this day and age. Um, like you mentioned earlier, uh, everybody who comes to the recreation facility will have to pass an entrance exam. Um, you'll have your temperature taken with a temporal scan thermometer. Uh, any individual with a temperature that registers 100.4 degrees or higher is not allowed admission into the facilities. Um, and then there are five health questions um, that our staff will ask that individual and any positive or confirmation to one of those questions also means that you're not allowed admission into the facilities. Those questions are available in the Tennessee Pledge packet for exercise facilities. So if you do visit the state's website, you can view those, uh, those five questions mm -hmm. there. Um, then once people come into the facility, there are limited occupant capacities for the available amenities in the facilities. Let's talk a little bit about those. 
Um, because, you know, one of the things that's appropriate with reopening these buildings is, of course, keeping everybody safe. Um, our kind of mantra in Parks and Recreation for the past couple of days is, I'm okay, you're okay, let's keep it that way. Mm -hmm. We have some signs that say that too, <laughs> We right? do have some signs in our <laughs> facilities that say that now, absolutely. Um, so these limited occupancy capacities, those are also listed on our website as well under the coronavirus updates section. Uh, our wellness centers all have different capacities based off of a determination of the square footage of the space and how we can properly allow social distancing within that space um, and how people can utilize the equipment in the rooms. And people will notice when they visit our, recre our uh, wellness centers and our recreation centers, not all of that equipment's available anymore. Yeah, it's, it's, it's easy to... You know, our staff did a great job, let me just start by saying that, uh, of going in and moving things around uh, where we could establish a six foot distance between seat to seat. You know, we were able to do that at great effort because some of that equipment it is really heavy. Yes. Um, but, you know, Carrie, it's, we could not have done a better job. We could not provide a safer environment than what we're doing we're following all the guidelines, we're following all the protocols, and so far, with the exception that I know of, of one person, uh, everybody has been very complimentary about how they feel like it is a great, safe environment. The one person that, that wasn't happy was simply unhappy because um, it's not mandatory that our uh, users, our staff has to wear masks and gloves. Mm -hmm. So every Parks and Recreation employee that's there serving is wearing a mask and gloves. We highly recommend the public to come in and wear theirs, but it's just like grocery stores and everywhere else. It's optional. If you choose not to, you don't have to. So one lady came in. She was excited about being able to start back. She came out of the room. She wasn't really upset, but she said, if everybody's not wearing a mask, I don't feel comfortable. And she chose to go home. That was her choice. She made it, and we respected that. But she wasn't ugly about it, you know, but she just felt uncomfortable with mm -hmm. that situation. That's been the only person that has turned around and left because of something that they didn't feel like was handled correctly by everyone. And, and so with that, and we've been open four days now, I'm extremely pleased at the, the way that the um, all the safety guidelines and, and the way we've got the, the facilities set up has, has been uh, received by the public. Absolutely. Um, with those limited occupant capacities, though, once capacity is met in a particular amenity or in the facility, we can't allow entrance into the building of any additional patrons until people exit the facility. So we do have queued waiting areas outside of our buildings. You know, should we ever get to a point that we have to start waiting lines, basically. Right. And people are used to that because, you know, there's a lot of... Uh, uh, we went to this weekend, it was beautiful, like a lot of people, we made our trip over to Lowe's to buy some flowers and uh, we had to wait to go into the, mm -hmm. to the store until somebody came out. And, you know, so right now that's just kind of the way things are and uh, people are getting used to it. But, you know, the, the bright silver lining in this is that it's going to get better and we're going to get back to where we were hopefully sooner rather than later. Absolutely. Um, because of the modified way that we're able to open our facilities right now, we are not charging general admission fees um, for amenity use in the facilities, nor have we reactivated passes yet. So we, we realize we're just getting started on this journey, but we're waiving those for now. Yeah, I felt like it's not really fair to the to the, our pass holders um, to reactivate their passes at this time since the amenities that they are using our facility for, the swimming pools, the gyms, and, and locker rooms, and so forth, since they aren't available, um, we just felt like it would be sort of, uh, we're, we're shooting ourselves in the foot by doing that. So right now, uh, for the, uh, a short period of time, and we'll probably change this within the next week or so. Uh, this during this gradual reopening, we have been letting allowing everybody into the facility at, at no charge. Okay. 
Um, with our pickleball taking place in the facility gymnasiums, we do have a reservation process in place for it um, so that people can register for their opportunities to play either two to four people per court, um, depending on how you like to best play pickleball. Uh, the cost is only $12 for two hours, and that two hour slot does give you an hour and 45 minutes of active play time. Um, if you're interested in more information on pickleball reservations, um, or more of the policies and procedures around those. Uh, information's available through our website, wcparksandrec.com. There's also information online about how you can reserve an indoor tennis court and the reservation process for our outdoor pickleball courts at Academy Park has also reopened. Yeah, and, it's, and everybody's used to that anyway. Um, and the reason why there's a fee associated with that is simply because you are guaranteeing yourself the opportunity to play and, and therefore, you know, because you're reserv reserving something strictly for your own use, I felt it was appropriate to uh, assess a fee for that. Absolutely. A uh, couple other things, seniors ages 60 and over um, will have facility entrance pri priority, excuse me, to our um, five main facilities that have reopened Monday through Friday from 6 to 8 a.m. And no youth under the age of 16 may be left at a facility without a parent or legal guardian. It's a little bit different operating procedure than we've, what we've done in the past, but we feel like it's necessary. Um, during these um, particular times. Uh, a couple other things, facilities have separate entrance and exit points now. Um, our entrance is the main entrance to the facility, like what you're used to using, but you do have a separate exit point um, for the facility. And so for a few people that's, you know, like just old habits die hard, you know, they walk out of the wellness center and they start to head back to the front door and we're like, no, no, wait, your exit is this way. Um, and then the equipment. So all equipment has to now be wiped down before and after use. And then our staff has a cleaning rotation within every two hours to wipe down equipment as well. So on terms of sanitation, we are all working together to try to keep everything um, as clean as possible. And that's, you know, that's one of the things that's been one of the most positive uh, pieces of feedback that we've got from our users that have come in this week was that they were extremely impressed about the fact that they have watched everybody. Peer pressure is amazing. You know, everybody's wiping things off before they use it. Everybody's wiping things off after they use it. And then our staff is coming in behind them and, and wiping things off too. So when you have that much attention paid to uh, the surfaces that people are, are touching, and, you know, and we're using the approved products that, you know, kill germs and virus. Um, you know, we feel like we're doing everything that we can possibly do. Mm -hmm. and, and quite frankly, I, I think that the, you know, the facilities have actually never been, uh, you know, this, this, this clean. And, you know, and so right now, I think there's a, a lot of comfort that people are finding in that that they seem to be very satisfied with the way that this has been handled so far. Absolutely. And, we, we that, and that's because everyone is really just trying their best. You they know? are. We're all in this together and we're trying to pull through the best way that we know how. Absolutely. Um, there's other things that we could go over at this point, but we're slowly running out of time here today. Additional information on operation guidelines, a list of available and non-available amenities, capacity limits, again, pickleball procedures, uh, and reservation opportunities can be found through our website at wcparksandrec.com. Um, again, you can get updates by clicking on the link for the coronavirus update, or if you want to call one of our main facilities during our operating hours, you can speak with a receptionist at a front desk. They would be happy to give you any general information or answer any questions that you might have. And the last few minutes, Gordon, as we wrap this up, um, we do want to say one thing about programming opportunities. Um, it was not an easy decision to make, but unfortunately, all of our programming opportunities um, through the summer at this point have been canceled. Yeah, Carrie, unfortunately, that's one of the casualties of this, <clears throat> excuse me, this situation is that, you know, during the summer, we, we literally have thousands of families that use our services through the camps and the clinics, uh, just the daily uh, admission into the facilities, the pools and everything like that, you know, and unfortunately this 
particular at this particular time we just can't allow that because the the guidelines have not relaxed enough to where the people can gather um, one of the things that we had to do was we had to refund um, a considerable amount of money to people that had pre-registered for all these programs and so you know that's that's a very unfortunate uh, set of circumstances but we're doing everything that we can the minute these rules are relaxed uh, if we have the opportunity this summer, we will revive as much programming as we possibly can. But until we're notified that we can do that, everything has been suspended. Absolutely. Um, and I, I think the most important statement um, in what you just said was that as new guidelines are released um, and as we are allowed, we will pick up as much programming and additional facility operations as we can to meet the needs of our public. Yeah, I mean, uh, yesterday, for example, the governor uh, issued another um, change to his pledge, which now is going to allow uh, small group training, uh, and we could even introduce certain parts of our youth dance program. Um, and, you know, so we're excited about that. So we'll get with our dance instructors, and we'll get with them to tell them uh, – start planning, mm -hmm. you know, because if it says we can do it, we want to do it, but we're going to wait. We're going to not just rush into things, uh, but we're going to plan this out and we're going to be able to, at some point here in the upcoming weeks, reintroduce our dance program. And that will allow some activities during the summer uh, that we thought we were going to have to cancel, but but it's just another example of how as we see these, these guidelines relaxed, we're going to be ready to uh, reintroduce these things to our as part of our services, and, and, and I'm excited about that. It's a step in the right direction. All right. Well, we'll end it on that note. I want to thank you so much for your time this morning and coming in to share a little bit about these reopening or the gradual reopening of our facilities with us. Well, Carrie, it's always a pleasure to come over here and do this with you, and we're, we know we're proud of what we do, and, and it's a wonderful community, and, and we're glad that we're uh, starting to get things back into a, uh, some level of normalcy. Great. All right. Well, as we close the show today, I just want to let you know, uh, latest updates and detailed information as it's available to us will all be posted through our website at wcparksandrec.com. Be sure to log on and check us out frequently um, for the latest news, or you can follow us on our social media channels through Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for up-to-date announcements and news um, as our situations continue to change with operation in our facilities and hope Hopefully, at some point in the future, a gradual list of uh, modified programming opportunities. Thanks, you guys, for joining us for today's show. We'll see you next time. And until then, remember, Williamson County, it's all about you.